Um, a friend of mine told me about a lady called Sherry Edwards who was coming to Melbourne, Australia, and she could stop blood flowing with her voice. Well, I wasn't very interested. I just was a bit rude to him and just said, oh, really? And three months later, she came back again because she'd started a training course. And I was still not interested, but I was bored, so I went along to hear this lady speak. And within the first five minutes of her lecture, she mentioned that um, she worked with heart and lungs and liver and macular degeneration and she used all these common terms except for macular degeneration. Well, I went into shock because I'd just been told two weeks before I had it. I really knew I did have it because my optometrist told me, but I'd had it confirmed by a specialist and he said, I suggest you pick up a hobby that doesn't require eyesight. And I dwelt with that for a few weeks and thought, I don't think I'm going to have to worry about that. So when this lady comes and mentions this very specific term, I thought, I've got to see her. So that was how I contacted Cherry. Um, I did some training, then came out to the States to get the next bit of the training. And they worked on me, Sherry worked on me at one of the visits with macular degen because while you can be diagnosed with it, it doesn't necessarily interfere with your eyesight for a while. It can take years for it to manifest in affecting your eyesight. And at that stage, I had about a, well, in our terms, a 20 cent coin size blank spot in my field of vision. So if I closed my good eye, there would be total whiteout for about that much on a, on a page of writing. So she worked on me, trialled frequencies, and nothing happened, nothing happened, nothing happened. It was probably about the tenth sound or tone she was giving me. I suddenly saw lines of writing through that blank spot. I still couldn't read them, but I could see there were lines of writing. It was like, my God, there's lines of writing there now. Like within ten seconds of hitting the right tone. And so her follow-up was to work on codons and genomes and decode them a couple of days later. And when she trialled those sounds on me, um, holes came in this blurry field where I could clearly see letters, perhaps three or four letters spanned. And it just gradually improved that I could read again, listening to those sounds. And the other th wonderful thing was I got... Um, colour back <coughs> because some of the proteins she was working with uh, there's different proteins to help you see different colours and I didn't realise till months later when I was at home looking at some parrots in the bush we've got very colourful birds I suddenly could see the very bright red head on a rosella and I thought oh my gosh I haven't been able to see colour at distance like that for a long, long while. So that was a lovely insight to get as well. And I've had some other good, great things with myself, with um, a huge reaction to an antibiotic. <coughs> I was covered in a rash coming out all over me and I had to get help with it. It was too severe for me not to get an antihistamine, which I did. And then a friend said to me, well, did you try your sound? And I said, no, I didn't. She said, well, come on, come on, I want to see what you do, show me. So I took my voice print and had a look, and the very highest in the voice print, the most out of range spike, would be the equivalent of um, a thing called leukotriene D4. Now, they're the things in the body that cause inflammatory and allergic responses. And there it was, just totally showed up. And to work with that to bring it down, it was the frequency equivalent of an antihistamine. So I dialed it up and listened to it for 10 minutes, went to bed and the rash was 70% gone the next day, listened to it twice more and it was totally gone. Um, the doctor told me it could take weeks for that rash to fade 
and it was still progressing through my body at the time I started taking, listening to the tones. So that was a nice um, proof to me that the voice does reveal um, features that can be useful. But uh, Sherry's uh, work on sound, I've been following that uh, in the 90s. I, I didn't decide to finally um, come and visit her until 1990, well, uh, maybe the year 2000, but in 99 I had watched some, some of her work with gout. My wife happens to suffer with gout and I wanted to see if that would uh, help her. So we came down here and uh, I had an uh, encounter with Sherry and uh, she was much more than I expected. She had a very special uh, gift in, in uh, picking up people's problems without the aid of computers and all this other fancy technology that has evolved to sort of express what she innately can do. She has um, a condition called synesthesia. Uh, many people are probably are not familiar with the word. Synesthesia is a, is a, a, is a form of uh, functioning where your senses are mixed in, the, in a normal person. Not she's not normal, she's super normal. <laughs> but in a normal person, your sight and your hearing are separated. In synesthetics, the senses are blended together. So for example, when she hears you talk, she sees colors and things of that sort. And uh, uh, so uh, that gave her a, uni a unique uh, way of perceiving what was happening with her. One of her earliest uh, encounters with, uh, with her gift was she was visiting for her own problem at the doctor's office and there was a man uh, who was being treated for hypertension and when she heard him talking she started humming a sound that brought down the blood pressure so the doctor was so impressed that he had it re this repeated and that's little by little that, that's how she uh, went off and uh, tried to make sense of her talent and uh, as you know uh, her claim, well not only a claim because I think at this point is fairly validated, is that the human voice is a hologram of the human body. So uh, according to her perception, the frequencies that are missing from your voice is what your body needs in order to reestablish uh, the balance that uh, a normal healthy body should have. Uh, health in a sense could be defined as a when you're not aware of your body at all. When you start becoming aware of your body, any part of your body, it's your body telling you where the problem is. One of the things that impressed my wife when she came down with me, um, I, I had a condition since, uh, well, since my young years, uh, uh, that's, uh, I had a, a type of shaking that's, uh, that's called intentional tremor. It's controlled by the cerebellum. <coughs> I was a war baby, and uh, during the war, my, uh, my mother obviously didn't have access to the right foods, and so I had certain deficiencies of uh, vitamins and so forth that led to this. But as a teenager, it was very embarrassing. But let's say I wanted to dance with the girl and uh, my hands would be shaking. I felt very calm inside. But the girl would say, well, what's wrong with you? How come your hands are shaking, you know? And that, of course, would make me shake even more. And uh, after a while, it sort of pushed me away from the whole idea of even dancing. Well, anyway, uh, uh, when I was in medical school, I remember uh, when the professor used me as a guinea pig, uh, trying to figure out what I had. At that time, Freudian concepts were very, uh, prevalent, so the, the students uh, were projecting all sorts of uh, Freudian BS, you know, the, he had uh, this or that in his youth, blah, blah, blah. But it turned out that I had a severe vitamin B1 and B6 deficiency, and when I took these in high amounts, the tremor dissipated to a very significant degree. But I still had it. Well, anyway, when Sherry picked up my notes and started playing the sound, uh, my tremor went away. Uh, you notice my head is shaking a little bit. 
uh, I'm not usually aware of it, but uh, once you become aware of it, uh, you, you'll be noticing it. Well, anyway, that w uh, is one of the things that uh, is sort of part of this. And when I would play the sound for 10, 15 minutes off, that would go away. And uh, I, n in normal medicine, there is no treatment. Uh, you know, it's one of these things you live, learn to live with it. Is, is, and there are many, many problems in medicine of a functional nature where, well, you're told, listen, this is not going to kill you. It's just do the best you can. Or they'll pop, give you pills, for example. Another form of treatment, but this is not the type I have, but it's Parkinson's disease. There, they shake even when they're not trying to do something. Intentional treatment is when you stretch out your hand, uh, and you know, like if you put a piece of paper on my hand, you would see a, a tremor. Well, in Parkinson's, they're shaking uh, addressed, you know. Well, to conditions like this, uh, you know, usually you end up taking all sorts of drugs. And each drug, no matter what doctor you talk to, there, there are no safe drugs. Each drug carries a whole gamut of side effects. And you never know what side effects you're going to get when you take the particular drug. With Sherry's approach, uh, frequently, if you uncover uh, the frequencies that are missing and supply them to the body, it will correct them. Uh, it, I'm sure you probably have interviewed Bob, who uh, 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 you know currently is a co-worker here with Sherry. He was involved in a severe accident on a motorcycle, and uh, he was mangled, and uh, they gave him very little hope to just being able to walk. And uh, he used to be very active in sports. He was an excellent tennis player. Well, he's back to doing all that. Because the medical end of it, they reached the end of the rope. They, they, they thought he was lucky just to be able to move around, you know. And uh, now he's a totally normal human being. There's a physician I met here a couple years ago. I don't remember his name now, but I'm sure you probably uh, put him on film. He had MS. He, reached, he went to the Mayo Clinic, went to top uh, institutions in the United States. They reached the end of the rope, and you know, he knew that from the, the orthodox medical perspective, he was doomed. It was just a question of when his end would come. <coughs> and uh, he's now a totally normal, functioning human being. You know? And uh, I've seen with my own eyes some remarkable cases here. Personally, well, I've had my share of illnesses. I've been uh, brushed with the other side already a couple of times. I've had open heart surgery and uh, have diabetes. Uh, one of the things that Sherry helped me with, uh, I was uh, two and a half years ago, I was discovered to have a very malignant form of cancer, which is a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. In fact, uh, that brought me as close to the other side as I ever want to be. <coughs> Not that I'm afraid of going, but I, I'd like to hang around for a little while more. <laughs> But anyway, um, uh, when, I, uh, when they excised the tumor, uh, I chose not to follow the traditional approaches because most of the cancer treatments, you end up rapidly departing and uh, they bring a whole series of uh, other problems. Now, there are some types of cancer in which I'm not trying to knock down my own profession, but uh, there is also a lot of stuff that uh, is not, uh, well, they just don't have the means of uh, dealing with it adequately. Unfortunately, ma many of the treatments used in cancer uh, killed the rest of your healthy body and you s maybe survive your cancer, but to the, you die of complications. In fact, a friend of mine uh, that I worked with had the same cancer as I had and chose to go the other way, no longer with us. But uh, as, uh, as you see, I'm still sitting here and still able to interact in a, in a normal way. And uh, 